Welcome again, brothers and sisters, to another episode of Race in America, a candid conversation. I'm your host, Monty Poole, and today we're going to talk about the one-year anniversary of George Floyd. We all know what happened on, March, on May 25th, 2020, and uh, the entire world saw it, the entire world reacted to it. And so what we've been, what we've been able to do today, and it's, it's a wonderful thing, I think, is being able to invite a couple of law enforcement officers uh, onto the show to discuss maybe the year that we've what we've done in the last year and what we haven't done, what we need to do, uh, but primarily to focus on uh, police community relations and see where we go from here. And the first uh, panelist for us today is the police, police chief of Oakland, and that would be Laron Armstrong. Laron, say hello to the people. Hello, and thank you for having me, Monty. Looking forward to the conversation. Appreciate you being here, man. Much, 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 much. Uh, and also, we have a San Leandro police detective, former wide receiver, for the Oakland Raiders, that's Kenny Shedd. What's up, Kenny? Hey, Monty. It's been a while since I've seen you. I appreciate you uh, thinking of me and having me on the show. It's going to be a great, great segment. Yeah, yeah, we hope so. Let's get to it. Um, yeah. I'll ask you first, Kenny. Um, when you first saw the video from Minneapolis, what was yeah. your initial reaction? Uh, initial reaction was uh, I was I was in shock um, when I saw the initial clip. Uh, it, it was it was hard to watch. It, it, it took the life out of a lot of uh, a law enforcement agencies all around the world because uh, something like that should never never happen. Um, uh, but I, I also I kind of knew that there had to be some type of backstory behind it too. So I didn't want to prejudge uh, going by the video itself. Chief Armstrong, what was your initial reaction? Well, similar. Uh, you know, I had a difficult time watching. Uh, you know, I, I, I wanted to believe that uh, that there was something other than what I was seeing that was happening. Uh, but I clearly felt like, wow, I just watched a man murdered in front of me. And I, I hope justice would be served. And so really that was my hope, was that this would not be the reflection uh, that people see when they when they see law enforcement, right? I did not want this to be the representation of who we are as a profession. Yeah, it's tough to watch, and and which takes me to the next question. We've seen so many videos in recent years of people being killed and brutalized, uh, and the public has a reaction to it. In the case of George Floyd, we saw that reaction go beyond the black community. In previous instances, many times, going back to Rodney King. Uh, people consider this a black problem. Uh, it's not a general society problem, it's a black problem. But in the wake of George Floyd, what we saw was communities that don't normally demonstrate stepping up to demonstrate. We saw it in Walnut Creek, we saw it in Los Gatos, we saw it in Salt Lake City, we saw it not just in the United States, but in around the entire world. What, Chief Armstrong, made this situation different from the previous ones? I think we all had to acknowledge that this was a, a man that was not combative. This was a, uh, Mr. Floyd was not resistant. And I think everybody had to acknowledge that this was not justice. Uh, this was not police work. This was not law enforcement. This was somebody actually taking uh, a man's life in front of us. And I think all of us collectively can say that that is not appropriate that that is not in line with what we expect from our police officers. And I think in that moment, that was a call to everybody in this country to acknowledge when we see wrong, we have to speak out and say that people need to be held accountable. And I think that's what the call for justice really started uh, from. Officer, Sh Detective Shedd, what was your uh, take on that in terms of the reaction to it going global? Yeah, so um, obviously, um, I would want the, the case to be uh, looked at and taken to court and uh, the, the appropriate discipline to be handed down. Um, the, our justice system is in place for, for a reason. Um, and I was hoping that that would um, play itself out. What I did not uh, deal with very well was the protests that turned into riots and um, looting. Uh, our city, San Leandro, took a major hit um, from that case and other cases that people deemed as uh, p uh, uh, police vi uh, uh, p police violence towards uh, citizens, and our, our city got destroyed as a result of, of all that. So um, 
I, I know everybody has to be heard. Um, it, it's just there's a way to go about it. And protests that are peaceful is the way to do it. Nothing that's going to destroy the rest of your, the, 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 our country. Yeah. I, don't, I don't condone that. Detective, you grew up in Davenport, Iowa, uh, the Sir. Midwest. So I'm asking now, what, what got you to go down to this line of work, uh, to police work? I mean, you played in, in the NFL for a few years played in Spain, pro football. Uh, what yeah. took you into police work? My father uh, was a police officer. So me growing up, I, I got a chance to see it firsthand. Um, it was something that that that, that um, laid the, the, the path for me very early. My dad was well-respected in Davenport, Iowa. Uh, you know, picture a black man in a city that has pretty much zero black officers. Uh, Iowa is famous for being mostly white anyway. So uh, you would think that that was a recipe for a disaster. But my dad's mentality is that uh, he treats everybody fairly. Um, and and um, if, if but if you committed a crime, it, he doesn't care what color you are, black, white, Mexican, uh, Asian. It doesn't matter. Uh, he's going to do his job and um, but he's going to do it fairly. And um, that's my mentality as well. And I've been having that same mentality for the last almost 19 years at San Leandro Police. I've, I've been nothing but impressed with my profession. And uh, uh, listening to uh, a chief from, from Oakland, it just, uh, it's, he's solid. Uh, we work hand in hand with Oakland PD and I'm impressed with the, with the good apples. Obviously there's some bad apples who are out there and um, we have to keep addressing those as well. Chief Armstrong, I'm familiar with your path to police work and how you got there. Could you explain to people what took you uh, down the road to police work? Yeah, I mean, I grew up in Oakland, in West Oakland, and uh, didn't have a relationship with police. I wasn't fortunate enough. I didn't grow up knowing any police that I really uh, trusted. And so, uh, you know, uh, you know, I also had a very violent experience that impacted my family. You know, my brother being killed. Uh, so when you grow up in Oakland, who was a city uh, built on social justice, when you grow up in a neighborhood where the Black Panther Party was started, uh, you, you grow up with, with uh, an anti sort of police uh, belief. Uh, but in that moment when you have tragedy strike your family and you're in great need of support and you need law enforcement to hold the person responsible, uh, uh, bring them to justice, I think in that moment you recognize sometimes that communities uh, that, you know, mistrust the police the most, uh, need police, uh, the uh, you know, they trust uh, police the, the least, they, they need police the most. And I was in that moment. But I thought, how can I, you know, be a part of the change that I really wanted to see? Uh, and that led me into the Oakland Police Department, really to, to change a system that I thought should have a better relationship with the community, should be a, a sense of safety for people when they call, should... Uh, uh, you know, uh, be a department that people don't fear, that people actually feel like uh, they appreciate. And that's what uh, I was seeking to do when I joined the Oakland Police Department. So, so from hearing the two of you, it sounds very much like your experiences from childhood were very different. You know, uh, Detective Shedd grew up in a home with, where his father was a police officer. And here we go with Ronald Armstrong growing up in a situation where <laughs> he really doesn't trust police. And if I understand yeah. correctly, uh, did they actually barge into your house at some point, uh, Chief? Yeah, yeah. I was at my grandmother's house as a young kid, and they served a search warrant uh, on the home. And and unfortunately, that wasn't a, a pleasant experience for a nine-year-old kid to see uh, having police come in and enter the home and, and feel like uh, you're afraid and not uh, not understand what was happening. And, and so I think those type of memories and those type of experiences stay with you. I'm not saying that people don't violate the law. I'm not saying that there uh, there clearly is a role for police, and, and obviously uh, we 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 need to exist. But I think it's so important that you have relationships with law enforcement, so that in those moments where uh, police action has to take place, that at least those that are uh, that on the other side of that understand that they can feel safe, feel like they can trust law enforcement, and not feel like there's a potential for something bad to happen. Yeah, in the wake of the uh, George Floyd incident, uh, it became popular um, in the demonstrations for people to shout defund the police, defund, 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 which really technically what they're urging is reallocation of funds, not the total dissolution of funds. 
And, and so, uh, Detective Shedd, when you hear defund police, what, what, what are your thoughts on that and what do you think actually should happen in terms of re reallocating funds to, uh, so that police officers maybe aren't responding to calls that uh, maybe medical health experts or, or mental health experts might normally be responding to? Well, I, I just, I, I, don't, I don't like the whole snap judgments uh, that are taking place now. Defunding the police, to me, I know what it technically means, but uh, on the surface, it sounds like, to me, get rid of the police. And I can't picture a society without police officers around. It, it's a very scary thought, and I have kids. And um, uh, I, I, I see both sides of the argument, uh, but I've been a police officer, like I said, for 18, 19 plus years. And I've been in incident uh, situations when I was on, on patrol where, uh, you know, it, it's 10 o'clock at night, not too late and everything. And I see uh, three young uh, uh, black uh, juveniles walking down the streets. I recognize what they have on. Uh, I let it go because I'm thinking that maybe, you know, they're on their way home or whatever. There's a 10 o'clock curfew. I didn't do too much with it. Uh, I drove past them and like three or five, three to four minutes later, the alert tone goes on a, on a robbery that just took place. A lady got her, got hit and then her purse stolen. And it was the same suspects the, uh, that I just passed and gave the benefit of doubt of. So, you know, I mean, I, I it's, it's hard to uh, get on board with this defunding police thing. Uh, when I see firsthand the results of what happens when police are, aren't involved or are present. So I, I don't agree with that defund pro uh, protest uh, march at all. Chief, when you hear defund police, um, what, do you, what is your take on it? Well, I, I think, again, I think it's the point that people believe that law enforcement may not be the right response to everything. And, and, and I agree with that. I don't necessarily agree with, with uh, defund but I do think that there is uh, a role uh, for other better responses to be funded. I think when you think about dealing with those that suffer from mental illness, uh, clearly police may not be the best response for that. So if there are certified clinicians or mental health specialists that would be better, uh, that could respond to those calls, of course, they should respond. We, we train our officers to be police officers and to deal with law enforcement related issues. Uh, but when it comes to dealing with those that are suffering from a mental health issue, we may not be the best to respond. And so I think the ultimate goal is to get people the best medical services that we can provide as a society. And if that exists within another organization, we should be open to that. The difficulty with that conversation is in a city like Oakland that has a very small police force but a huge violence problem. It really says that we just need to have conversation about what is the right balance. Uh, you have to have law enforcement, obviously, in a city that is now at 53 homicides. Uh, uh, and so you know that you have an issue with violence, but also you do have to hear the concerns of our community that says that situations dealing with those suffering from mental illness could probably be handled by a non-law enforcement response and allow law enforcement to focus on violent crimes in particular. But that doesn't mean that uh, situations where mental health issues have uh, a nexus to violence, I think police should continue to respond to make sure that everybody is safe. But I do think it's something that we as law enforcement need to be open to. Is there a better response than someone with a gun and a badge? Well, yeah, I think based on the evidence, uh, you would think that in many cases there has got to be a better response to that. We're going to take a break right now, and I'm going to come back and, and discuss some other issues that we haven't gotten to. Uh, thanks for joining us right now, but we, we'll be right back. Welcome back. We are joined by Oakland Police Chief Laron Armstrong and San Leandro Police Detective Kenny Shedd. Uh, and I have a question for both of you, and I'll, I'll start with you, Chief, because it's, an, it's, it's a kind of an obvious question, I think, but it's also there's some nuance involved here. And the question I have for you is, is there racism in law enforcement? Well, I don't think that there's uh, racism in law enforcement across the board. I think that there are people who have biases. I think we all have biases. I think that there are people who come into law enforcement who have uh, 
who have implicit bias and don't even know it. And I think that's why it's so important that law enforcement has a couple of things, right? A comprehensive review process for who they hire. These are the conversations that we should be looking into before we hire people as police officers, asking people the difficult questions around race, uh, around how, uh, relational experiences, uh, diverse backgrounds. Have they had interactions with people from other cultures? I think law enforcement does itself a disservice by not having conversations about race at the entry point. I think also too, Organizations need to look into people's uh, habits, the things that they do, the way in which they interact with people to determine if those biases are playing out in officers' actions, because they can. We cannot, as law enforcement, believe that we have race issues in the United States of America and not believe that they're going to enter the law enforcement realm. The question is, is does these biases that one has impact their decision making? Could it impact the way they interact with people? Could it be producing uses of force and incidents uh, that shouldn't occur? And so I think this is a challenge to all law enforcement to examine its practices, to, on, to, to take an ongoing looks at their officers' performance, but also to invest in training, invest in uh, implicit bias training, in, invest in racial uh, uh, diversity training, and, and invest in uh, cultural competency training. All of those things were taken on at the Oakland Police Department because you can't have a conversation uh, about race without acknowledging that some people do have racial racial biases that they may not be aware of. Yeah, we had a uh, we had a uh, a senator uh, a couple of weeks ago say on national TV that he doesn't believe racism exists in America. And uh, Detective Shedd, what's your thought on not just racism in America, but uh, yeah, in the in the law enforcement realm? Uh, do you think it exists? And if so, uh, you know, how so? So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like a uh, like a in investigator inside of an investigator, meaning uh, if I hear that there's an issue when it comes to race, uh, I know that that issue uh, on the surface is so broad that it's 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 difficult to, ta to, to take on uh, without over consuming uh, yourself and wearing yourself out and becoming overwhelmed. So, uh, you know, you, 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 you can only do so much looking into the racism problem, or less, at least in my eyes. Uh, but uh, I do know that I work with uh, approximately 95 police officers of all different colors, races, and genders. And um, I, on a, on a daily basis, I'll just uh, pop in on a conversation, just uh, whichever particular officer, just to kind of see what their response would be. Uh, just to kind of see. Um, and I've been nothing but impressed with their responses. They seem genuine. They, I even try to bait them into saying some words that are very, very offensive, and they just can't bring themselves to say it. Even if I'm asking them to, it just makes them uncomfortable. So unless they're being fantastic actors, it's, it's hard for me to see uh, any of the officers that I've been working with for this many years as racist. Um, so but I'm always keeping my eyes open because once I do see that, uh, it, it will be addressed, that's for sure. Yeah, and you, you know, when you look at some of the videos and it almost always is a white officer and a citizen of color where it's the, the uh, Latino in Alameda or, you know, it's, it's, it does appear or can be perceived that, you know, there are some cops out there that lean toward their biases in a destructive way and the outcry is justified in some ways. Now, let me ask you this though. As men of color, how do you balance the line between black and blue? Because as you know, the black community has issues with law enforcement. And you know, when you see these videos, you see, you understand why. Uh, Detective, why, how do you balance that? Well, I, I, I balance it because I grew up black and I, and I, I always use this, but uh, anytime I got myself into trouble growing up or where the police were ch chasing me down or uh, uh, I was in a car where the police pulled us over uh, or anything like that, it's because I was doing something wrong. I was breaking the law or I was going too fast or I was watching a fight that I, my dad has always told me never stand and watch fights, never be there. Um, it, I was in the wrong. So... Uh, but every time I got caught, I, the first thing out of my mouth was that, hey, you just stopped me because I'm black. So um, me knowing that and that wasn't correct, it's hard to uh, 
Uh, I mean, I use that to my advantage because if I go to a call where where I, I know what the call was, the details of the call set up, black male wearing a, a red shirt and if, driving a white uh, sedan, and that's when I get unseen, that's what they have pulled over. But I'm hearing this 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 guy screaming. I immediately tune it out because I know what he's trying to do. Uh, citizens, some most citizens don't have that advantage to kind of see the full story, though. Yeah, and Chief, uh, in your mind, what are the challenges you face as a black police officer uh, dealing with the black community? Well, I just think there's always the challenge of trying to build trust, right? Trying to get people to understand at the end of the day, I'm a black man that's concerned about the issues that I see uh, across uh, the country as well. Uh, and also as a law enforcement leader, taking my own personal experiences and my experiences as an African-American man and trying to bring that into the conversation in law enforcement, challenging other police officers to understand uh, what it feels like uh, as an African-American man when you have a police car behind you and you see those lights go on. Uh, how the fear and anxiety that you fear because you don't know what's going to happen. That is about uh, our ability to build relationships, to build trust with community. When you hear the mothers of African-American boys tell you that they got to sit down with their sons at 15 or 16 years old and tell them how to interact with police, that means that there's something wrong. And, and so we need to fix that so that African-American men across the board don't have to sit down and have these discussions with African-American boys about how to be safe when you're interacting with police. And on the other side, police officers have to have the discussion about how we deal with the community that has, uh, you know, trust issues with law enforcement and how we can invest in trying to build relationships. We have to, to, to do programs with young people. We have to go out and meet people at schools. We have to humanize ourselves as law enforcement so that people can begin to trust us and not be so fearful. But we got to make good decisions out there. And we got to make sure that when force is used, that that force is appropriate. And that we got to be willing to call a spade a spade. When something bad happens, we have to acknowledge that we messed up that that was the not, not the right outcome and that we as law enforcement need to do better and we in uniform need to call out misconduct and say to people that that's not acceptable and that's not a reflection of who we are as law enforcement. We gotta hold ourselves accountable. Oh, no doubt about that. Uh, Detective, I only got just a couple of minutes to go here. Uh, let me Sorry. ask you this. What do you think has changed in the last year in the wake of the George Floyd incident and what do you think maybe needs to change? I tell you, I saw Monty. I saw a video that just that was very strange to see. Uh, with, during the protests, uh, uh, a black male was videotaping himself tearing down uh, Bl uh, Black Lives Matter signs down this uh, sacred area of a park that was loaded with Black Lives Matter signs. And um, I don't know what he was trying to do, but all of a sudden, a white guy. Um, young adult male comes running from the background and tackled him. Don't you take those down? And he's screaming at this guy and, and they were pushing and shoving each other. And I was like, what is going on here? Um, in the end, the black the black guy backed off and left. And and uh, I was more than impressed. So it sounds to me like uh, uh, the unfortunate situation of someone passing um, may have some good uh, uh, remnants as well. Uh, because I think uh, the, a lot of the white America has seen enough and they're standing up and that's beyond impressive. Chief, uh, we'll end with you and in, in, in your mind, what's happened in the last year uh, and what do you think needs to happen going toward the future to improve uh, policing in America? Well, I think it's forced law enforcement to examine its policies and practices and the way in which it uses force, uh, particularly against African-American men and, 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 and across the country. I think it has caused us to think about how we can uh, use de-escalation more, how we can try to resolve things by using minimal force, how we need to build relationships with communities, how so many people in this country who rely on law enforcement doesn't trust law enforcement, and there's a need for us to do better. There's a need for us to be more transparent. There's a need for us to sit down and have conversations with our communities about our policing practices. 
I, I think that's all now on the table. I think in communities across the country, everybody wants law enforcement to be better. And I think that's a good thing. I hope that those that are interested in law enforcement now understand what's expected when you take on this huge responsibility. And so I think it's a call uh, for reform, reform in how we do things so that we don't have to continue to see videos that portray uh, law enforcement in this way where you see uh, excessive force or people taking someone's life like the instance that we had to see with George Floyd. It shouldn't have happened and we need to be better. And I think the call for improvement is coming from every corner of this country. That is the Oakland Police Chief, Leron Armstrong, former college hooper. <laughs> and our other <laughs> panelist today was uh, Detective Kenny Shedd from San Leandro, a former NFL player. I want to thank both of you guys for joining us today. It's been a good conversation and I think a very necessary conversation. We want to, as a society, be better. And one of the ways we can do that is to improve relations between law enforcement, because there's always going to be there, and communities. Again, thank you gentlemen for joining us. Have a good time. Enjoy it. Thank you.